What do you crave? When I think about this word crave, I think about a deep desire, a deep urge, a deep longing for something. My mother's homemade peanut butter Easter eggs was one of the first things that popped into my mind when I thought about the word cravings. She makes these every year, ever since I can remember. Before I could remember, she's made these peanut butter eggs every year around March or April. So this time of year, I begin craving those peanut butter eggs. And she made them again this year. But of course, with quarantine, I haven't been able to get to see her. My dad has assured me they're every bit as delicious as ever before. He assured me somewhat less confidently that there might be some left in another month or two, but he let me know they're really, really good. Now, my children don't have the same cravings I do. My two oldest sons just started their third year without added sugar or other sweeteners in their food. My two oldest daughters just started their second year. So they have a lot more willpower over cravings than I do. Since I have less willpower than my children, my wife figured if she made chocolate peanut butter fudge, it would help to satisfy my cravings. I want to talk today about a king, King David, who got a craving for a drink from his hometown of Bethlehem. And as I thought about getting a drink in Bethlehem, I remembered this photo I took in modern-day Bethlehem a couple years ago of a Stars and Bucks cafe. Yes, this is a counterfeit of Starbucks. But is coffee the kind of beverage that King David craved? No. King David actually became obsessed with his cravings for water from a well in Bethlehem. Now, cravings are often affected by our circumstances. Sometimes if it is difficult to get something we long for, it all the more. We may even become obsessed with this desire. And so in 2 Samuel 23, three of David's mighty, mighty men, the mightiest of the mighty, came to him in the harvest time under the cave of Abdalam, and his enemies, the Philistines, were pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And so David's in this cave, and his enemies have a garrison, a fortress, in his hometown of Bethlehem. And in verse 15, And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Now I get it. Water is wonderful. Our family drinks a lot of water when we go out and about in car trips. This is our set of canteens that we take with us. In age order, you can see our canteens and our, our larger jugs to refill those canteens. So whenever we go out and about, we have water. I gave up soda so, uh, a number of year, uh, about a year or two ago, and uh, I just love water. And I love, in particular, tap water. I've grown up with just tap water, and I find it far superior to bottled water. It's environmentally more friendly to drink tap water out of uh, reusable um, canteens, it's, it's, and it tastes so good. So I get it. David uh, is longing for something wonderful. He's longing for water, though, that is surrounded by an enemy, and it looks impossible to get. Oh, that one would give me to drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem. Well, what he doesn't count on is that his three mighty men are listening and taking this to heart. In the verse 16, And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. So David gets what he longs for. He gets this, he has this craving and he gets the water that he's been craving. Nevertheless, David would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. Now King David realized we can't control our circumstances. So what are you craving today? Maybe your cravings are for a return to an ideal time in your childhood or younger adulthood. Maybe your cravings are more present tense, for a return to normal life the way it was five weeks ago. 
Maybe your cravings are for a future that has got to be better than whatever you're experiencing now. Whether it be a bad relationship, loneliness, financial difficulty, health issues, fear of the unknown, anxiety. So often we get tired of our current circumstances and wish that we could control them. Even when things do start to work out for us, like David getting the water he so craved. We may realize that those memories were not as ideal as we remembered. There may be negative consequences, trade-offs, or costs involved in getting what we, what we desire. Or we may fall into a deep depression of hopelessness when we realize that we either can't get what we desire or it is too costly. Maybe you are disappointed and regretful over big events that have been canceled at this time. Weddings, baby showers, lunches with friends, visits with relatives, birthday parties, vacations. The lists go on. With disappointment, you may feel you missed out on something beyond your control. Now, there's no point in imagining over and over what could have been, what could have been different about something we can't control. Dwelling on what we can't control simply reinforces our disappointment and can be a huge waste of our time and and harmful to our mental state. But while we can't control our circumstances, we can control our responses to those circumstances. David realized he could not control the danger involved with getting the water and the guilt he would feel drinking that water once his mighty men had risked their lives to get it for him. So he changed his cravings from seeking physical water to speaking to seeking spiritual life-giving water. Psalm chapter 41 we see David writing a song and he's thirsty. He says, as the heart panteth, as the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Think about David there in that cave outside of his hometown, not able to get back home, not able to get that well water from his hometown. So he just has his tears to keep him company. And people, probably with good intentions, saying, Where is thy God? Why are you left here abandoned? One verse 4, David goes on and says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. This beautiful song reminds us that although we cannot control our circumstances, we can control our responses. Rather than becoming angry, bitter, or complaining, we can focus on controlling our responses through the grace and mercy and help of the Lord. In 1 Peter 2, verse 1, we see this idea of getting rid of those old attitudes, those old negative attitudes. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, If so be, we have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now the choice of what we desire is ours. Can we choose to lay aside a complaining spirit when circumstances in our lives don't meet our expectations? We can choose to grow. We can choose to mature. We have control over these choices of where we turn our cravings. 
My daughters have been imitating various women they admire in our church recently and, and playing at having their own worship services. They are seeking to grow up to be like these positive role model women. We can crave similar growth in a spiritual sense. We start off desiring the milk of God's word. And then as we grow, we use that to grow spiritually, to mature. And throughout Psalms, David seeks to grow closer to God. We can have this spiritual growth. He says his soul thirsts for God and longeth for God. When David dumped out the water whose memory he cherished from his hometown of Bethlehem, he was showing the Lord that he craved what the Lord could give far more than any earthly cravings he could imagine. I, I believe those three mighty men were not upset that David gave up that water, but they realized he was seeking a deeper satisfaction than what even they could provide. And they, they loved him. They wanted him to get that deeper satisfaction through the living water that only the Lord can provide. So in Psalm chapter 63, verse 1, we see another time when David is writing a song about being thirsty. And he says, O God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. I believe he means right away when he wakes up, before those depressive negative attitudes can pop into his head when he wakes up in the morning. But early will I seek Thee. Not as a last resort, but as a first resort, right away, before we dwell on what we cannot control. He goes on in verse 1 to say, My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. See, that meditation on the Lord and on what he can provide on his satisfying our cravings, our deepest most earnest longings. It can start in the morning as it did in verse 1. Early will I seek thee. And it can go all the way till we drop off to sleep at night as we meditate on God in the night watches. God's loving kindness is better than life, better than anything we can long for in our past memory, in our expectations of the future, or what we may feel we're missing out on today. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I, we have life. If you're here in this video today, you, you are alive. So let's lift up our hands in the name of the Lord. Our soul can be satisfied. My mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. If you'd like to join with me in prayer, if you'd like to join with me and share how we can get through these times together. If you want to praise the Lord with me, I invite you to reach out and to contact me. But most of all, most of all, contact the Lord. Let our lips express our desires, our cravings to Him, because only He can truly, truly fulfill and satisfy our desires. God bless. Go in peace.